Episode 10. January 3rd, 2018, Blaze is a free woman. The world had changed dramatically since she was last free in 2006 before her second trial. Cell phones, social media, online banking, it was all very new. And if you saw the national headlines and Innocence Project social media posts, you would think all was going well for Blaze and her new life. Despite her case being dismissed with prejudice, her record is not clear. Blaze needs to officially be declared not guilty by the state. Blaze says that Clark County maintains they did not exonerate her, they just chose not to try her. On her record, Blaze also still has a gross misdemeanor for sexual conspiracy from when she got caught trying to have sex with another inmate. Shortly after her release, Blaze reconnects with a former inmate and the two begin dating. And in July of the same year she's released, they marry. Blaze was sent to prison when she was 19 years old. She had just graduated high school and before her arrest had been an amateur exotic dancer. She was now 35 with zero experience or job training and she was unable to find work. After her release, Blaze posted this on her Facebook. We've had to fight for everything we have. I tried for state benefits, welfare, social security, etc. I got medical and food stamps, which has been the reason we ate at all. I was homeless and sleeping with my wife and dog in our car for two to three days. Blaze told me everything was overwhelming. Driving was terrifying. When she'd see a Metro police officer, she would go into full shock, almost crashing her car. She eventually moved into a weekly hotel with her wife, one similar to the weekly hotel she says her attack in May 2001 happened at. Blaze was able to finally find work at an overnight laundromat cleaning sheets. She barely made any money and told me the majority of her co-workers were undocumented. When Blaze got this job, she lost any benefits she had received from the state. Here's another one of her Facebook posts. I don't want to be left in a position to send myself back to where I came from due to bad decisions. I'll do anything to make sure my wife, family, and I are okay. If you live in Las Vegas and need help with cleaning, yard work, or anything else, I'm more than willing to do that too. Just let me know. Blaze told me many times she wished she could just go back to prison. At least there, she had food and shelter. On the two-year anniversary of her release, Blaze posted this on her Facebook to her supporters. During my wrongful imprisonment, you were my strength and the hope that kept me fighting to prove the truth. Now, in what turns out to be a bigger and harder fight than my confinement, where are all of you? I need everyone's help even more now than I did then. I'm so stunted, institutionalized, emotionally, mentally scarred, that I'm incapable at this point of functioning like an adult. I feel abandoned by those I thought would always be there. Blaze began using drugs again. Because the charges are still on Blaze's record, if you look her up, it looks like she killed two people because both convictions from both trials come up. Blaze told me one time she was pulled over and was already terrified because of her experience with cops and the officer who pulled her over approached her car holding his gun because he thought he was approaching someone who killed multiple people. Blaze has now been out of prison for more than five years. These past few months, things are looking up for Blaze. She's clean and off drugs, and she's no longer with her wife. She also moved to Tennessee to be near her sister Ashley and found a job she enjoys at a sandwich shop. She tells me money is still tight and she can't afford medical insurance and to fix her car and pay rent. She's also had a really hard time finding an apartment in her price range and one without windows. Having been incarcerated for 16 years, Blaze grew accustomed to no windows. Now they kind of scare her. Blaze currently has a lawyer working pro bono on her case trying to get her help. She has two civil cases pending, one state, and one federal. It was clearly established in 2001 that police officers could not fabricate evidence to accuse somebody of a crime that they did not commit. 10 months ago, the state filed a motion to have their case heard before federal case. The judge agreed and federal cases could take years, which will further delay things for Blaze. Her attorney plans to appeal that ruling, but the state has not filed anything yet to appeal despite it being more than 10 months.
I find myself thinking about Blaze almost daily, and I think about, could I ever be charged with a crime that I didn't commit? It could happen to anybody. And the scary thing is people lose their homes, their families. They lose everything in their life based on even just a wrongful arrest, regardless of whether or not there's a conviction. You're asking me, has it changed my opinion of the justice system? Absolutely. In fact, not only has it changed my opinion of the justice system, it has changed my opinion of police and policing and people in government who allow these kind of things to go on and look the other way because they're too busy, you know, trying to do whatever it is they do and line their pockets. There is so much about Blaze's story that I wrestle with. I sometimes also think about Diane Parker, the other woman in the story, a woman beaten and raped and stalked who also did not get her justice. I think Kirsten is obviously the most tragic character in all of this, but Diane Parker is a close second in that she uh, lived this incredibly difficult life, has this horrific event occur in her life, and then police do nothing when it comes to investigating her case. Just like Blaze waited 16 years for justice, she's waiting once again. You know, I've been involved with wrongful conviction cases now for roughly 25 years. I would say things are worse today than they were 25 years ago. When, if someone was charged with the same thing Blaze was under the same conditions today, they would probably have the same outcome that she had under the same circumstances because nothing's changed in Clark County. I reached out to Las Vegas Metro Police, Detective Thousand, Judge Kephart, Detective La Rochelle, and the District Attorney's Office all declined to be part of this podcast. To support Blaze, we've set up a GoFundMe and all the proceeds will go to helping her. The main thing she wants, mental health treatment.